Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norvell. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia receives donations of AstraZeneca vaccine from regional counterparts. St. Lucia announces cushioning quarantine of fees for returning nationals. And the Ministry of Health and Wellness introduces the rapid antigen test. The Regional Security System RSS Fairchild Metro 3 touched down at the George Charles Airport about 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon with precious cargo. In its hold were 2,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine from the government of Dominica. On hand to receive the shipment were Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney and Minister for Health and Wellness Senator Honorable Mary Isaac. Boxes of the vaccine were handed over to Prime Minister Alan Chastney and Health Minister Mary Isaac as the aircraft sat on the tarmac at VG. This donation will bolster the national COVID-19 vaccination campaign, which will be launched soon by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. On Wednesday, February 10, 2021, St. Lucia also received 1,000 doses of the vaccine from the government of Barbados. These vaccines, which have been received from regional counterparts, will be used in the rollout of the first phase of vaccinations for 1,500 frontline workers, including medical personnel, state security, including the police, fire service, correctional officers and paramedics. The government of St. Lucia has extended sincere gratitude to the government of Barbados and the Commonwealth of Dominica for their acts of generosity. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney announced Tuesday at the House of Parliament that 74,000 doses of the vaccine will arrive on Ireland before the end of February. St. Lucia will also purchase a further batch of the AstraZeneca vaccine from India as well as receive a donation. There are also ongoing discussions for vaccines from the African Union. In keeping with the Ministry of Health and Wellness's updated national COVID-19 response policy, effective February 11, 2021, the government of St. Lucia is absorbing a greater part of the cost of state quarantine for returning nationals. Subsequent to routine reviews of the quarantine policy, noting infringements in the process, home quarantine has been reduced to special circumstances only and will now transition to state-based quarantine facilities as much-needed vigilance is required in the management of all incoming nationals. Please note that the government of St. Lucia continues to cover the cost of locals and residents on island who are placed in state quarantine and isolation. The daily fees announced in August by the government of St. Lucia um, indicated that single occupancy would have been 95 US per day, double occupancy 160 and triple occupancy $240 and double and triple occupancy applies to families within the same unit. These fees have now been reduced to $25, $45 and $65 US respectively. The government, in acknowledging the nature of the COVID-19 pandemic, will continue to honor applications for financial exemptions, and that includes students um, who have completed their studies within three months and are returning home, and to persons who have traveled for medical care. Um, the government is also considering dire socioeconomic needs, uh, including the forced repatriation of nationals. Now, during the quarantine period, the policy still stands that Returning nationals will be swabbed on the seventh day and those receiving a negative PCR result and meet the criteria to thereafter quarantine at home will be given the permission to do so, of course, with the wearing of the Amber Solution watch and the BioIntelligence sticker. The BioIntelligence sticker is for one-time use and will also monitor vital signs. Being mindful that the state-regulated quarantine period is 14 days, those who do not meet the requirements to leave state quarantine will need to ensure that their payment for accommodation is made for the full 14 days. Anyone testing positive for COVID-19 will be immediately transferred into care at the cost of the state. Permission for home quarantine will be granted after application through the portal www.stlucia.org and applies strictly to minors, persons with health conditions, and those with specific conditions after careful review of all applications, including site visits. Returning nationals from all international jurisdictions must note the following. Check with the airlines for flight schedules. Secure your reservation and facilitate payment for accommodation at a government-operated public health facility 
by accessing the booking portal located on www.stlucia.org slash COVID-19. All fees must be paid directly to the quarantine facility. If you have applied for a quarantine payment exemption, please await confirmation of approval. A seven-day wait period is necessary to facilitate applications. Once state quarantine arrangements have been confirmed, pre-fill the travel registration form located on www.stlucia.org slash COVID-19. You must do so no less than seven days prior to travel. Print and travel with the authorized travel registration. Obtain and upload a PCR negative COVID-19 test within five days of travel into St. Lucia. Please ensure that the result indicates PCR. You must travel with a copy of your result. Upon arrival in St. Lucia, the wearing of a mask is mandatory. All arriving persons will be screened at the port of entry and assessed for any signs and symptoms of COVID-19. After advancing to Immigration and Customs, you will be guided to the designated government-operated transportation for the transfer to the state-operated quarantine facility. At the public health facility, you will be screened daily by healthcare professionals. Individuals are permitted to receive items from friends and family. However, they are not permitted to deliver items to anyone until the full 14-day quarantine period has come to an end. The government of St. Lucia wishes to remind nationals and residents that only essential travel is encouraged at this time. For more information about St. Lucia's COVID-19 response, entry protocols and travel registration forms can be accessed at www.stlucia.org slash COVID-19. In an effort to scale up national testing for COVID-19, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has introduced the rapid antigen test at specific points of care. The testing option will commence through a two-phased approach. The first phase will focus on the validation of the test, which is a standard activity prior to the full-scale introduction of any diagnostic test. In this validation phase, individuals who come in for COVID-19 testing at the Victoria Hospital, Owen King European Union Hospital, the St. Jude Hospital and the VG Sports Complex testing outpost will be offered antigen tests. Dr. Dana da Costa Gomez is the acting national epidemiologist. The validation phase covers a one week period and is expected to be completed by February 13, 2021. Due to the high prevalence of COVID-19 in St. Lucia, any individual with symptoms suggestive of COVID-19 who tests positive on an antigen test is considered a confirmed COVID-19 case. However, while the validation phase is being undertaken anyone presenting for testing at the clinics which were previously mentioned receives both an antigen and a COVID-19 PCR test. It is important to note that a negative antigen result does not necessarily mean the absence of COVID-19 infection, particularly as it is possible to get a negative test result despite having symptoms suggestive of COVID-19 or being a contact of a confirmed case. In such instances, the antigen test must be confirmed with the DNA PCR test. Individuals who receive a negative result on an antigen test should confirm that diagnosis with a PCR test and continue to quarantine at home until receipt of their DNA PCR results. The antigen test detects the presence of a specific protein of the COVID-19 virus. A positive test in someone with symptoms indicates that they presently have the virus. Like the sampling procedure for the COVID-19 PCR test, the antigen test requires a swab sample to be taken from the nose. Antigen tests offer some advantages for both the individual and the healthcare system. They are fairly inexpensive. The test can be used within non-health settings as well as within clinical settings where individuals seek care, such as respiratory clinics or hospital emergency rooms. They provide results in approximately 20 minutes. There is no need for highly technical staff to perform the antigen test. The antigen test allows for rapid detection and isolation of cases, particularly those people presenting with symptoms. The quick turnaround time of test results allow for faster identification of high-risk contacts of confirmed cases. The validation phase is required to ensure the reliability of the antigen tests as a diagnostic tool. 
On completion of this validation and the confirmation of its reliability, the second phase will be implemented. During this phase, select respiratory clinics will become dedicated antigen testing sites on island. In the lead-up to this second phase of point-of-care antigen testing, the public will be provided with more information. St. Lucia has amended its arrival protocols. All arrivals must now obtain a negative COVID-19 PCR test five days before arrival. The COVID-19 Prevention and Control Amendment Bill, which was passed in Parliament at the last sitting, amended the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Act No. 9 of 2020, which was enacted on the 2nd of October 2020. The Act regulates the containment of the spread of COVID-19 in the interest of public safety, public order and public health. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, highlighted the significance of the amendment. There are pre-travel requirements under Section 36 of the Act, and one of the requirements is for taking of a test for COVID-19 with a negative result seven days or less before a person arrives in St. Lucia. A person is also required under Section 36 of the Act to un upload the negative results of the test for COVID-19. In keeping with the Act, the uh, Polymers chain reaction PCR test is the test approved for COVID-19 and therefore the bill amends the pre-travel requirements to stipulate that a negative result of a PCR test for COVID-19 must be taken five days before a person arrives in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, um, this five days is the standard now in the industry and has a lot to do with the access of the test. Prime Minister Honorable Shasne explained that it is not possible at this time to implement any time frame less than five days. If we were going to go to 72 hours, Mr. Speaker, it wouldn't require us to accept a rapid test. Um, and, and sadly, the um, CMO um, is advised not to accept a rapid test at this point, and therefore um, we are amending it to now reduce it to five days um, as part of the new protocols that we're putting in place. But I want to say, Mr. Speaker, um, that we have been very satisfied so far as to how this protocol has worked for St. Lucia, and we think that reducing it to five days will significantly strengthen um, the existing protocols and the bubble that we currently have with the hotels. The bill went through all its stages and was passed. Support systems remain in place for the business community on island impacted by the pandemic. The Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs has been engaging such private sector agencies who are experiencing difficulty with their operations. Permanent Secretary Sophia Henry says the ministry's rapport with the business community has been further strengthened as they have been exploring solutions to stay afloat. Financing is available to the St. Lucia um, Development Bank. Uh, again, it's a matter of them having the collateral to take advantage and um, also um, persons to guarantee these loans, so they are coming to us and we are trying, we are assisting them with putting together their business plans and that is essential. So um, a lot of our support is the, by way of um, helping them with their financial statements, helping them put their business plans together, um, contacting the financial institutions, connecting them, letting them know what is available and that is key because sometimes you have the, the, um, the measures available or the support and they, they, they are not aware. So we have been having sessions with the um, business associations and with even those that are registered with us and that are not part of the association to let them know what is available. Ms. Henry explains the process for businesses accessing support services from the ministry. The Chamber has a lot of big businesses, but they also have small businesses. But we have other small associations, so quite a few of our businesses are members of the small associations. Um, we have, for example, the Essential Coalition of Services. Um, we have the Bakers Association, and that's a newly formed association. Um, we have the Fashion Council, we have the Southern Business Association. So there are quite a few associations that lend support to these small businesses and that are very much connected to the ministry. But even um, some of the other small businesses that are not members of the association, once they come to the ministry for support, we register them and we have the details and we um, assign a business development officer to every business. And that business development officer would contact them, keep in touch with them and lend the requisite support to them. 
Businesses interested in accessing support from the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs can call 468-4223 to register. St. Vincent and the Grenadines also received a shipment of the vaccine from Dominica on Thursday afternoon. The Minister of Health, Honorable St. Clair Jimmy Prince and the Permanent Secretary Cuthbert Knights received 5,000 doses. Officials say the doses are enough. The Government of India will be providing to St. Vincent and the Grenadines about 40,000 doses of the vaccine. Prime Minister Ralph Gonzales on Thursday said that priority would go to frontline workers in the first instance. And 5,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccines also arrived in Antigua and Barbuda on a regional security system aircraft. The vials of vaccine were donated by Dominica, who received 70,000 doses from the government of India. Prime Minister Gaston Brown's office said that the doses will be given to 2,500 frontline workers. Antigua and Barbuda is expected to receive another 40,000 doses from the Indian government shortly, and Brown has written to Prime Minister Narendra Modi seeking to purchase a further 100,000 doses. Let's take a look now at how fellow regional countries are coping with the impact of COVID-19. The Barbados economy is expected to be hit by more than $50 million in losses during the two-week COVID-19 lockdown announced by Prime Minister Honorable Mia Motley. In giving an overview of the economic impact of the lockdown last year and the potential fallout from the current shutdown during an interview with Barbados Today, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strong, said his forecast is based on the average spend per week across the economy, which he hopes does not decline any further. However, Strong expressed some fears that the economic impact could turn out to be even worse when one considers that unlike in the earlier lockdown, supermarkets are closed on weekends and public markets are also out of business during the national pause. He said it is estimated that the Barbados economy lost just under $1.5 billion in 2020, which he linked to the shutdown in tourism business with its obvious effect on the economy. Strong issued a plea to Barbadians to comply with the health protocols so that whatever economic activity the country could muster would help to keep it afloat through the end of the year. The government of Montserrat has announced more stringent lockdown measures following the confirmation of a fifth COVID-19 case, a student at the Montserrat Secondary School. The ministry also disclosed that 30 persons have been tested since the first new case was confirmed on February 6, 2021. In an effort to curtail the spread of COVID-19 and to allow for the testing of 40 primary contacts of active cases, the list of essential government and private services has been reduced. Therefore, the list of businesses that must remain closed has increased and now includes supermarkets. The list of mandatory closures also includes bars and nightclubs, restaurants to include takeaway or delivery service, barber shops, hair salons, spas, gyms, retail stores, churches and other religious establishments, banks, gas stations, bakeries, a business connected with farming, fisheries and all utility providers. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All. Do you know we can limit the spread of the COVID-19 virus? The Ministry of Health is your partner in achieving this solution. Introducing the Amber Wristwatch. The Amber Wristwatch is designed for monitoring daily movements while in quarantine. It provides an accurate location and a precise heart rate. The device is also waterproof and can be worn during all daily functions, like washing the dishes or taking a shower. It's worn like a typical timepiece. The Ministry of Health can now better monitor people in home quarantine and receive alerts of those who do not stay in the confines of their home. A 14-day rental of the Amber wristwatch is just 75 US dollars. Let us stop the breaches of home quarantine. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tain, General, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility, 
pour information à gouvernement cette ci GIS à son petit télévision national pays à NTN capozato nouvel à Creole présenté au Primus Hutchinson Ministre qui n'est responsable pour la sécurité, cette fois-ci, Honorable Herman Gilder Francis, déclaré que la session Sénate, la session Sénate, la semaine passée, qui a fait que les gens porté à tic, à tuer, en prison, bordelé, sans permission, les autorités, prison, c'est les gens qui contre la législation et que les autorités qui ont adressé la situation très sérieuse. Ministre Francis dit que les autorités très concernées pour savoir qui les prisonniers qui ont ni téléphone mobile et l'autre article pour servir sans permission. Le ministre a averti que les officiers prison bordelais qui ont commencé pour une bonne démarche, avec une forte démarche, et action qui est très sérieuse concernant la situation. La raison que le ministre a adressé la situation de la dénonciation de la c'est parce qu'il y a des semaines qui passent, les prisonniers bordelais ont ni téléphone mobile qui ont servi les médias sociaux pour faire plainte de maladies corona en prison. Selon le ministre de la Sécurité, malgré la situation, ça la vie est normale après ça, et l'affaire a calmé, les autorités, j'apprends des marches pour protéger les prisonniers et puis ses nécessités de regarder les maladies corona, en particulier les sanitizers et les masques pour faire Mais Le ministre de la Sécurité a fait comprendre que même quand tout l'autre secteur a qui trouvé affecté par le corona. C'est la même façon que le secteur l'audience j'ai trouvé affecté aussi. On a un de dit qu'il y a un bon de trois prisonniers qui a sous remand, j'ai trouvé si caution. Mais malheureusement, il n'est pas encore possible pour les payer et de présenter ce qui est nécessaire pour sortir de remand. Mais le ministre Francis n'y a pas que, comme le gouvernement, j'ai apporté des juges en plus pour aider à adresser ces cas-là, ce qui est soulagé et qui est opération de l'audience à payer là. Le ministre Francis déclare que le chef juge là, j'ai apporté un juge pour adresser la session de l'audience par Zoom, ça veut dire que ça vit les médias sociaux et aussi ça, ces cas des affaires criminelles là, qui ont aussi trouvé adressé tout de suite. Selon le ministre Francis, des marches déjà en place côté un comité qui n'est plusieurs officiers qui engagent des affaires de loi PIA, qui a trouvé établi, mais j'ai trouvé établi pour discuter avec le conseil premier ministre là, et le conseil à soumettre la route pour adresser à faire l'audience avec tous ces cas qui peuvent encore paraître devant le juge et le magistrat. Là, j'ai mis plein en place aussi pour considérer tous ces prisonniers qui fermés pour un pile de temps à présent, car ce n'est pour tant de nouvelles à ce cas. Pour ces cas, là vous avez considération par les autorités et le gouverneur général. Il dit que l'année aussi spécial arrangement qui est en place à présent pour les prisonniers qui ont comporté le assez bien et qui ont suivi ce programme qui est en place à Bordelais pour trouver considération pour vivre en société en bas de cette condition. Ça veut dire parole. Le ministre de la Santé a continué pour mettre un pile effort pour contrôler et pour abattre des graves maladies corona, mais il a aussi mangé et a souvent dit les autorités qu'à ménager en cette crise. Par conséquent, le ministre a déjà organisé une façon pour ménager ces cas-là, ces cas corona qui par Jaguar en ces communes même, ça a fait par un groupe médical et ça c'est parce que 80% des gens qui a trouvé maladie pas ni un degré qui tue sérieux mais critique. Pour ça, il y a une grande quantité en ce cas qui reste à Kaï pour recevoir le traitement. Mais les officiers du ministère ont reçu qui en pile de monde à présent qui en Kaï, qui recevoir le traitement, le mois qui a augmenté et qui a eu un problème, pas ni assez laid dans ce cas là et aussi à d'un monde qui n'a pas suivre ce protocole-là. Alors, pour ça, il y Uh, arrangement j'ai fait pour placer les gens à dans une facilité à pas. En résultat de ça, c'est un cas qui n'est pas très grave, qui est resté à dans une facilité hôtel, et c'est ça qui est plus grave, qui est à l'hôpital Victoria. L'initiative là, c'est pour protéger principalement la santé et la protection de 
Parce que tout le monde, ça veut dire, ni yon qui maladie a, et public la généralement. Mais c'est à quoi qui, ça a fait possible pour ménager la maladie plus mais et pour recevoir le traitement plus facilement. Mais c'est de santé, car aussi, oui, merci public là, pour aussi pour et coopération pour continuer pour suivre et obéir ces règles là qui a place. Un effort pour augmenter la façon des tests pour la maladie corona en pays. Le ministère de la Santé a établi un test nouveau pour conduire le service de la qui a fait en deux phases. Pour les gens qui ont commencé à visiter l'hôpital Victoria, Owen King, St. Jude, Exports Complex à la Vigie pour recevoir le test nouveau. Ça a fait pour deux semaines, mais j'ai commencé. Et qu'à bout de bon, le 13 février, ça c'est samedi 2021, le ministère a fait comprendre que parce que le mot maladie corona c'est tellement haut en pays, a, personne qui prend le test là, un résultat, un résultat sorti positif, ça a une confirmation qui est véritablement ni maladie. Et pendant l'exercice là, qu'après coup, personne qui a visité ces cliniques là, qui a euh, reçu tous les tests là, et ça qui, ça c'est qui était déjà là avant et qui était déjà nouveau. Aussi, le ministère a fait comprendre que le test nouveau est là, qui a porté nos antigènes, qui a porté bon avantage pour les gens qui ont pris et qui ont pris le service de santé aussi. Et qui n'a pas de chèque pour ces vies. Le test là a fait ni en ces cliniques là et l'autre. Il a fait ni en ces cliniques là et l'autre côté, à part des cliniques. Le ministère de la Santé a continué pour plaider et puis le public là pour continuer à coopérer et puis et pour tout, nous tous ensemble, ça détruit mauvais puis mauvais épidémie qui a affecté affecter le pays à présent. Tout le monde nous peut travailler ensemble pour faire ça en possibilité. Et c'est comme ça nous nous voilà, mesdames et messieurs. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation pour vous remercie. Je vous remercie de conserver la vie. Je vous remercie pour l'autre nouvelle en créole. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine. Et comme moi tout le monde en est doux avec le ministère de Santé Cadeau pour une bonne proportion contre tout à fait des maladies corona pour protéger le corps, servir masse, euh, sanitize et pas sortir un groupe qu'on sauve nous en basse direction depuis à euh, 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 7 heures au soir ou jusqu'à 5 heures euh, le bon matin. Avec, ça c'est le point privé présent au Chanel. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.